हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो टुडेज चैप्टर इज द लंचन सो एज यू कैन सी इट्स नॉट प्रोनाउंस एज लंच ऑन इट्स प्रोनाउंस एज लंच इन एंड रिटर्न बाय विलियम Somerset Morgan So if you read the chapter you will come to know that of uh, in the very first paragraph this is like a very quite an old piece written by William Somerset Morgan So what do you understand by the word luncheon now if you just break the word if you just your if you just read the word luncheon what does it mean a lunch right so that's exactly what this word means it means a a lunch and during the olden times it it was the official term to ha to say lunch was known as luncheon now before starting the chapter let me introduce you to the writer of this chapter william somerset morgan so if you read the very first paragraph you will come to know that he was a play writer he was a novelist he was a short story writer so i'll write it down he was a play writer now what do you mean by play writer as the word rightfully suggests someone who writes plays he was a novelist what do you understand by novelist someone who writes novels someone who writes books so that's known as a novelist and and a short story writer so as you can see william somerset was these three he was a play writer he was a novelist he was a short story teller now before coming to what this chapter is really about i want to tell you if you go on a play for lunch or for dinner does not matter at any restaurant or or at any hotel uh how do you decide on a place supposedly you going with your friend with your relative be it anything but how do you decide on a place what are the various criteria that come to your mind while deciding on a place think about it supposedly just say tomorrow you want your friend tells you that let's go out for dinner let's go out for lunch so what are you thinking what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you say that okay let's go out for lunch firstly the very obvious thing the place that's right you decide on what would the place be like and when i say the place there are various categories of place like firstly there can be a place that is extremely very cheap and not very fancy secondly there can be a place which is not extremely cheap but also not very extremely expensive so you can see it's a mediocre kind of place not highly expensive then the third is a highly expensive place you know these five star restaurants the seven star restaurants these are all highly expensive places so if you or your friend if right for this example i'll say you or your friend go out for a dinner so obviously you will decide on some place on the basis of your budget right so if for example your budget to spend at this lunch or dinner is only 1000 rupees then obviously you won't go to a place that charges 5000 or 6000 rupees right so quite naturally when you go to a place it's obvious that first and foremost you look at how much do they charge and now we all being very tech savvy technology being upgraded so much we have so many apps we have apps like swiggy zomato that if you just look up you can find out the cost of two if you go to zomato or some places you will see that they have written that minimum 
say 1500 for 2, 1700 for 2, 2000 for 2. So on this basis, you decide how expensive or how cheap the restaurant is going to be. So this is, like I said, this is one of the major criteria when you go for any lunch or dinner. You decide on the budget and accordingly you look for places. Now, coming to this chapter, the luncheon. Now, uh, William Somerset, he was a very intelligent kind of writer, if I were to say. Intelligent how? If you read the introduction of his in the very first paragraph, it's written, he had a very unadorned style of writing. Now, what do you mean by unadorned style of writing? Adorn means a very beautiful and attractive way of writing. Something that, you know, goes like, oh, this is so beautifully written. This is so positive. And unadorned style means something that is not very attractive or not very positive at the very first instance. So he had a very, you can say, a unique way of writing. Something that is not very visually, you, I can say, attractive or appealing at the very first place. Then it's written... Cosmopolitan settings. Now, what do you mean by cosmopolitan settings? What does the word cosmopolitan mean? So, cosmopolitan basically means a city, a city life place. So, uh, the kind of stories that he, write, he wrote was, had an adorned style, had a cosmopolitan setting. That means it had a city life setting. So, the story usually revolved around a city. It had a, I can say, a humorous, he had a very humorous way of writing a story. What is humorous? Something that is lighthearted and that also makes you, you know, makes you chuckle. Chuckle in the sense, have a short laugh. Then, he also had a shrewd sense of humor. Sense of understanding actually. Of human nature. So, what do you mean by shrewd? You know, many a times you see a person and you say he's very shrewd. So, what does shrewd really mean? So, shrewd means someone who has a very sharp judgment. The power of judgment is very sharp. So, you can basically say that person can distinguish between the right and the wrong really very well. So, that is where that is what he was. He had an adorned style. Basically, he had a very unique style, not really very appeasing or attractive. Cosmopolitan setting, revolving the, sit, uh, the city life. That is where his stories were like. And a shrewd sense of understanding of human nature. So basically, William Somerset had a very sharp understanding as to how human behavior generally works. And that keeping this point in mind, this is exactly what this whole chapter is about. It's about a lunch which the author has with a lady and how the lunch unfolds is basically what is humorous in the whole chapter. Humorous in the sense it's funny because once you go through the chapter and you go through the technicalities of it, you will understand that uh, what kind of human behavior a person has and how that person or how that lady interacted with the author during the entire lunch. So that is what is the gist of this chapter. Now, starting with the, starting with the first paragraph of the chapter. Now, here he basically says how he was introduced with the lady. So here he says he went to a play. William went to the play and there he was sitting next to this lady. And he says that he wouldn't have even recognized her until and unless someone mentioned her name. And that is how he recognized like, oh, I know this lady. Now, how does he know this lady? It will come into the next paragraphs. And then it said that she greeted him brightly. Now, what does brightly mean? It means 
हैप्पीली और विथ अ लॉट ऑफ चीयर सो दैट इज वॉट बेसिकली इट मीन्स सो यूर एट द एंड ऑफ द फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ इट्स रिटर्न दैट दैट लेडी केम एंड ग्रीटेड विलियम विद अ लॉट ऑफ चीयर एंड विद अ लॉट ऑफ एंथुजियाजम एंड देन she comes and says like do you remember me and william before he answers he says oh how time flies by what does time fly by mean if i translate it into hindi it basically means waqt kitna chala gaya so that means that he met this lady some time some years before how many years before it will come have patience so here she says oh how time flies by and she says remember that some years back you had asked me for luncheon and that point of time that is how we were introduced so and then when she says that a few uh, years back you you had asked me for lunch and that then william goes into how they were introduced so now as you all know william was a writer so he used to write books and she was one of uh, her admirers you can say what's an admirer an admirer is someone who looks up to the other person so that lady was basically admiring william now what happened was 20 years earlier so you can say that this uh, william met that lady 20 years earlier and now you can understand william when he could not recognize that lady because now he is meeting that lady 20 years later on so 20 years earlier william was living into a tiny apartment in paris now we all know paris the big big fancy city which has the very enormous eiffel tower so William was living in Paris and he had a very tiny apartment and at that point of time he had written a book and she had written him a letter that lady so in this entire chapter the name of the lady is not really revealed so we don't know what's the name of that lady so in the entire chapter it's referred to as her or the lady so continuing in this William says that twenty years earlier he had written a book, and she, being an admirer of his, had written in her letter saying that, "Okay, I enjoyed your book." And William replied saying, "A thank you." Now coming back to the present, that is twenty years later, she had again written him a letter saying that she is going through Paris. So basically, she is in Paris in his city, and she would like to meet up. she would like to meet up catch up for lunch and she says her time is limited what does she say her time is limited so what does this mean that she is not going to be staying in paris for a very long time not staying for a long time so this is what it basically means that she was going through paris and she wasn't staying in paris for a really long time and she would like to catch up with william for luncheon that is lunch for in when when the following thursday that is when she really had the time and where now here's the catch where did she want to have lunch at the iconic foyos restaurant now you know there are many five star hotels in india also expensive places that charge expensive amount of money for any lunch or any kind of food that you have there so at that point of time during the olden days foyos it's not called it is not pronounced as foyots this is a french word and usually in french the last letter is not pronounced so that is why it is called as foyos now this was a very expensive restaurant 
in France, in Paris basically, and Foyos charged a very big amount of money for any kind of food that you want to have there. So, you know, she wanted to meet up with the author and she herself suggested that, okay, let's go to Foyos. So now you can understand slowly and steadily, you will come to know what kind of lady she was. So now if I want to, if I admire you and I want to meet up with you, if I say, let's meet up for lunch tomorrow, I really want to meet you. So will I suggest the place or will you suggest the place? And in this case, she had not even suggested the place. She ordered the place. She said, we will meet at Foyos. So what happened was they met at Foyos and, sorry, they not yet met at Foyos. They decided to meet at Foyos. And reading that they that she wanted to meet up at Foyos really took the author aback. Aback in the sense he was really, you know, surprised or shocked or kind of uh, in, a, in a fix as to what should he do. Because Foyos being an expensive restaurant was something that he could not afford at all. And the phrase used here, used here is far beyond... my means now you see he's used his face that this is far beyond my means so what does this mean that he cannot afford this place at the very first thing so that is why he says that he cannot afford this place so much so that is why now he started doing cost cutting in his mind what is cost cutting now you see that you have a very big expenditure coming up so what do you, th you, and you can't avoid that expenditure, you can't avoid that expense. So what do you do if you have some pocket money or some limited amount of money, in your mind you start calculating where else will you cut down that expenditure. Now supposedly I'll give you an example, if your mom gives you a thousand rupees as pocket money for the entire month and you save it, you use it very wisely and suddenly there is a school trip coming up. School trip is something that you want to go and you cannot avoid. And that school trip costs you 500 rupees. Now, how much are you left with? Only 500 rupees to survive the whole month. So, what do you start thinking? Oh, I, I'll not spend on junk food this month. Oh, I'll not spend on uh, more pens this month. Oh, I will not spend on extra books this month. So, that is how you start calculating in your mind. So this is exactly what William Somerset did. He did not have a lot of money in his hand. Basically, all he had was 80 francs. How many francs? 80 francs. Now what's francs? Francs is a unit of measurement, a uh, unit of money that is used in France. So like India has rupees, France has francs. And if you see, he's used the word Use the word gold francs. Why, why do you think has he used the word gold francs in bracket? You don't really think they are made out of gold, right? No, they are not. So why do you think gold francs has been written in brackets? What does this word gold mean? Any idea? I'll tell you. So basically, this word gold means that they were of very high value to him. Gold usually is used when something is very expensive, something, it basically indicates a very high expensive thing. It, gold is not cheap. So that is why he says these 80 francs that he had for the month were very dear to him and he had to think of using it very wisely. So he thought that, okay, I have 80 francs and the lunch at Foyo will cost me just probably 15 francs. You know, not more than that. So, how much do you think will be left for the rest of the month? Yes, that's right. 65. So he thinks that, okay, in the rest 65, I'll manage the rest of the month. So in the last two sentences, he says that, you know, I can manage with 65 for the rest of the month if I cut down on coffee. 
so he is that means how indians you know are addicted to tea europeans are addicted to coffee so that is why he says that okay i'll cut down on coffee and that is how i'll go with the entire month because 15 francs he's spending where at the expensive restaurant 